And God said, I'm going to give you everything in the world for your happiness. But there's one tree over here that I don't want you to touch because I've given you the freedom of choice. I want you to choose me because you want to. I want you to love me and serve me because you want to serve me. You want to love me. I don't want you to do it because I make you. I've given you the tremendous responsibility of freedom of choice. So I put a tree here. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou shalt eat thereof, thou shalt die. What happened? Man looked at the tree. He looked at the fruit. He saw it was an unusual fruit. Probably had a magnificent taste. The devil was there in the form of a serpent to tempt him. And the Bible says that man broke the law of God. Man rebelled against God. Man failed the test. And man made his own deliberate choice. God said in the day that you eat it, in the day that you rebel against me, in the day that you break this law of the Garden of Eden, you shall die. God had to keep his word. Man had to die. Or God would not be holy. So from that moment on, man began to die. He died physically. He died spiritually. He died eternally. And all the troubles and all the problems of the world down through history have come from that great disaster because all of us are the sons of Adam. All of our prejudices, all of our hates, all of our fightings, all of our bickerings, all of our jealousies, all of our pride, everything that troubles the human race today came from the fact that we have rebelled against God and we're all guilty. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God, the Bible says. You have sinned. I have sinned. We are guilty. Pascal once said, in seeking to become angels, we have become less than men. Carl Jung, the great psychologist, once said, it is becoming more and more obvious that our problems are not social. He said it's not starvation, it's not cancer, but man himself, who is mankind's greatest danger. Bertrand Russell once said, it is in our hearts that the evil lies. It's in our hearts. That's what Jesus taught, that our problems lie in our hearts because Jesus said, for out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, thefts, false witness, blasphemy. Jesus said, your problem is a heart problem. The Apostle Paul said, for the mystery of iniquity doth already work. There's a mystery about it. None of us really knows exactly where the devil came from. I'm writing a book right now on the devil. I've been doing a lot of research for 18 months on the subject. We don't know for sure exactly how the devil came, but we know that he's a factor. We know that he is there tempting and pulling and trying us and attacking us and harassing us at every turn. And we know that mankind made the fateful choice in Adam to follow the devil instead of God. But the Bible says in spite of our rebellion, in spite of our sins, God loves us. And God gave his only son. Now the Bible says the wages of sin, the result of sin is death. What kind of death? Well, you go out here and you see the cemeteries and you know that people die physically. Yes, we're all going to die. In a hundred years, every person in this audience will be dead. Perhaps in 50 years, we'll all be dead. Everybody will be dead. I'm 54 years of age. The most of my life has already been lived. I know that I'm going to die unless Christ comes first. I know that I'm going to die. It's appointed unto man once to die. That's a result of sin that has infected the whole human race. Then there's spiritual death. What is spiritual death? Well, spiritual death is where you are alive in a sense, but you're also dead.